Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about an, the anonymous inner class and specifically the version that becomes a subclass. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website javacjava.com and select begin. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the anonymous inner subclass, okay? Now an anonymous inner class is a nested class defined without any name. An anonymous class is an entirely dependent upon either a superclass or an interface to work properly. This tutorial will focus on the version that is, that is dependent upon a superclass, okay? So what we've got here is I've got this class hello world and very, very simple here. Uh, it's got a single method in it called display message, which will display hello world, the string literal hello world to the console. Okay. This is going to be our super class. And then I've got this class tester here with a main method entry point. Now, um, on the next, next statement, let's just concentrate on the highlighted portion right here. We could do like hello world hw for the reference variable, new hello world. Normally we'd have a semicolon right here, but the semicolon ending that statement is actually right down here. And sandwiched in between the, you know, the end of the you know, parentheses and the semicolon, this is our anonymous class, okay? And so basically what we're doing in the anonymous class is we are overriding the display message from our hello world class up here, okay? So I'm going to just continue talking here for a moment and I'll get back to some of this stuff here. So in the example above, the anonymous inner class begins with the opening curly brace directly after the new hello world, right? So right here, that's where it begins. Um, the anonymous inner class ends at the closing curly brace directly before the semicolon above the statement, you know, this statement right here. So directly before this semicolon is where it ends. So we've got our, basically our anonymous inner class in there. So when the HW display message, when this particular statement is invoked, the output to the console will be hello earth, okay? And that's because we've overridden that. Normally it would have been hello world. If, um, you know, if, if this didn't exist right there and we displayed the display message, it would simply display hello world. But we overwrote it on the fly, basically. So, now what purpose does an anonymous inner class serve? Well, they are a fantastic shortcut when you simply want to override a method from a class without creating a bunch of clutter code to accomplish a simple task. Now, in the example above, we simply want to, wanted to override the display method. Now, how would we do that without using an anonymous inner class? Well, firstly, we need to create a brand new class that would extend hello world, right? Second, we would need to overwrite the display method. And to be thorough, we would include an at override annotation. Finally, we would create an instance of the new subclass and invoke the display message method on that instance. So as you can see, the anonymous inner class streamlines our code. And they really only come in handy when you just you just want to override that, that method, right? But you don't want to have all this clutter code because you're just it's just a single type use thing, right? So that's basically what they're good for. So now anonymous inner classes can show up in, in some unexpected places and I'll demonstrate that in the video tutorial using the code below. All right, so let's come down here and highlight the source code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen here and I've got a shortcut to my to the command prompt on my desktop but if you don't you can create one really fast by right clicking selecting new shortcut C and D next and finish. Alright, it's just that easy. If you're new to my uh, tutorials go ahead and type in, open up the command prompt, type in Java C. You should see all this, this stuff scroll by. If you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash, cd is short for change directory backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory here called java using the md command. And I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'm going to go ahead and create one for you. I'm going to change directories to the java folder. I'm going to make a new directory here. I'm just going to call this uh, anonymous inner. Okay, and change directories to the anonymous inner folder. I'm going to notepad up tester.java. Okay. 
tester.java is going to be the name of the source code file. Normally I'd make it like anonymous inner.java, but then it becomes a little confusing. I'm gonna demonstrate several different things in this here too as well. So, all right, let's go ahead and control V to paste or right click and select paste. All right, let's, um, let's scroll up to the top here. And the first thing I've got here is of course my hello world. And this is, this is our super class for all three of these, all three of these other classes inside of here, tester, tester two, and tester three, all have main method entry points in them. And I'm gonna demonstrate various different, various different things in there, various different concepts on that. So, but we're gonna concentrate first on this first one here, tester with the main method entry point. It's gonna do exactly what I talked about up there. Right, we're gonna do a new hello world type reference variable hw and set that equal to a new hello world object. And then we're gonna sandwich our anonymous inner class right in here and override the display message with hello earth. And then we're gonna simply dis invoke the display message method here, right? And um, it will actually choose this one right here, polymorphism basically. We're overriding this, so the actual object type will be um, this anonymous inner class type, and it'll choose the display, the proper display message, um, you know, on that there. So let's come up here and save this, and let's go ahead and clear our screen. Let's Java C to compile this, and Java, and we're just going to run the the tester one, right? Java tester. We want to invoke that class here. All right, so we get hello Earth. Okay, so just what we're expecting here. Let's say, for example, I just highlight this. I'm going to hit Shift Delete, right? Um, this would just be like what we normally have right here, okay? Um, if we were to do this, of course, we're going to see Hello World, right? Let's recompile that, rerun it. Okay, Hello World, just exactly what we expected there. I'm going to do a Control Z, which will undo that, and then we'll come up here and save this. Put our anonymous back in there. Run it, compile it, hello earth. Okay, so that's the whole purpose of it. We just wanna override this on the fly, right? Just in time is what it's called, right, GIT. Anyway, so um, let's talk about some other stuff here. Um, so you should, this is, this should be fairly, uh, fairly, I shouldn't say simple, but uh, you know, you should understand what's going on here with that. Now let's move on to something else here. And um, in tester two, I've basically got exactly what I've got up there. Only I've, I've done a couple things. I did the at override annotation because you really should get in the habit of that because you are overriding, you know, the display message up here. Okay, so I just stuck that in there. I left that out to, you know, avoid any further confusion on that. So we are overriding the display message here. And then I'm introducing a new method here called display error. All right, so, you know, we compiled it. We didn't receive any error messages. So that's fine. We can put a new <coughs> method called display error in here. And down here we are displaying the message. So I'm gonna go ahead and compile. Well, I've already compiled it. I'm gonna go ahead and run uh, tester two. Okay, so tester two displays hello earth, just like what we'd expect there. Now what happens if I try to, if I uncomment this, I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna come up here and save this. I'm gonna clear my screen. I'm gonna recompile. And we're gonna get an error. Cannot find symbol, hw.displayerror. All right, you have to consider here um, that you can, while you can put methods in here, it doesn't make any difference. You'll never be able to call them, okay? Just want to emphasize that. Don't create new methods in an anonymous inner class, okay? You'll never be able to call them. And the reason why is if you think about this here, right? We're creating a hello world instance, right? And the hello world instance, HW, is of hello world type, right? And hello world in our class up here only contains display message. It doesn't know anything. It doesn't have a display error. We're not overriding anything here. We're creating a brand new one. But our HW reference variable type of hello world doesn't, it doesn't exist, right? So that is going to, it isn't going to let it compile. There's absolutely no way we can run this. It's just, it's just impossible. And because an anonymous inner class doesn't have any name or anything like that, you can't specify something other than the HW, the hello world super class that it actually is because there is no name for the, the subclass, okay? So hopefully that should make some sense of that. I'm gonna go ahead and comment out that. So that's kind of rule number two. Don't, the only purpose of an anonymous inner class is to override a method from the super class. Don't think that you can go in here and you can create new methods and you can, you know, create new instance variables. Well, you can, but you 
do nothing with them. You're just wasting your time and you're cluttering up your code, which is exactly what you don't want to do. So, okay. Now that I've gone over that, let's talk about where I said they can, you know, uh, basically show up in some really strange places. So, in Tester 3, it's going to show up in some really strange places. Tester 3, I've got my main method entry point, and I've got a static method here, right, called really strange. Now, really strange, this method takes a parameter of hello world type, HW, right, and it will invoke the hello world display message. All that's, all that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to... <clears throat> um, I'm going to do this here real quick. I'm going to, well, I'm gonna comment this out here, right? Let's do a multi-line comment on this really, really quick here first, right? Okay, so the really strange method is gonna take a new hello world object. Now the new hello world object and its display message here will display hello world to it, right? We're not going to, we're gonna invoke it again here on the next line, but not right away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna save this. Let's clear our screen. <clears throat> Let's recompile. And let's run tester three. Let's invoke tester three class. So we get hello world. That's that's all fairly straightforward because we're passing it in a new instance of the hello world class, right? And our display message there. And we invoke the, the display message there, right? On the reference variable that we're having coming in there. All right, let me let's put a space here. And now let me show you something here. We have our anonymous inner class as part of the, um, as passed as basically an argument, and we're tacking that right off of the new hello world object there, right? So let's say, for example, we go shift delete, right? We have exactly the same line up there, right? With our, you know, our closing parenthesis for the method, for invoking the method, and our semicolon, right? Do control Z, and basically there is our anonymous inner class passed in as, you know, as basically as an argument, too. Um, piggybacking it off of the new hello world object, which is in fact, in fact our superclass, okay? So our anonymous inner class becomes subclass over that, overriding the display message, right? Which will display to the console really strange stuff. Now here is the, the closing um, parenthesis and semicolon that's right up there, right? So the anonymous inner class is all tacked in right there on the same invocation. All right, let's go ahead and come up here and save this. Let's recompile this, clear our screen, and let's rerun it now, okay? Oh, uh, let's rerun it now. Voila. All right, so we get hello world and really strange stuff. So you can see hello world was printed off because of this here, and then really strange stuff, we overrode the display message there right in as part of the, as part of the argument. So when it received the reference variable hw to this new object that we just created there, it was in fact the subclass there overriding it, you know, the anonymous subclass, really strange stuff, and it did the display message. All right, okay, so if, um, you know, I'm gonna leave you guys kind of with some final thoughts at this point in time. I'm gonna go ahead and get this off the screen and I'll get that off the screen there. So this is another one of those tutorials where if you are new to the concept, then you should wait a day and let the concept sink in and watch the video again. You know, I'm a believer that, you know, frustration and confusion are simply signs that you are learning. You know, the, the important thing to remember is just don't give up, you know, keep reviewing until you have your aha moment, then move on to the next thing, you know. Uh, you know, however, though, if everything makes sense, then you're ready to move on to my next tutorial where I will discuss anonymous inner classes that implement interfaces instead of superclasses, right? Okay, um, that pretty much concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.